Universe Guided Meditation Demonic Seduction Let's begin with a prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, guide our reflection. We entrust to you our imagination, our memory, our intellect, our will. Console us where we need to be consoled. Challenge us where we need to be challenged. Protect us where we need to stand in need of protection. And in all things, help us to grow in your love more deeply. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin, let us center ourselves in love. Take a deep breath in. Again, breathe in God's love and light and strength. And as you exhale, let go of the worries and the fears, the frustrations that haunt your heart. Whatever you're feeling right now, Imagine the light of the Lord's love is shining down upon you. Breathe in that light. Breathe in that love. Continue to breathe deeply. At his baptism with the gift of the Spirit, Jesus heard the Father's voice calling him beloved. When have you heard the Father's voice and known yourself to be beloved of God? Think of that time. Think of a time when you felt close to God, protected, loved, secured. Breathe in that blessing. The scriptures record that after his baptism, the Spirit, the Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert alone. This was a time of testing, of strengthening, of strengthening his Spirit for the mission that lay ahead. Picture Jesus in the desert, under the hot sun, fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Be there with him. Feel the heat on your skin. The unforgiving intensity of that sun. Gnawing hunger. Relentless thirst. Hear how the devil first tempted Jesus. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. If you are the Son of God, Satan twists 
what it means to be beloved of God. For Satan, if you are God's beloved, you shouldn't have to experience hunger or thirst. You shouldn't have to work for your daily bread. The beloved of God deserves more. The standard of Satan, bypassing hard work, a fast pass to comfort. Where does this temptation hit home for you? Name your fears and resentments to the Lord. hear Jesus' response. Not by bread alone do we live, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Jesus reminds us that there is more to life than satisfying our bodies. Are you hyper-focused these days on your physical needs? How are you feeding your soul these days? Ask for Jesus' help in facing down this temptation. Satan taking Jesus to the parapet of the temple in Jerusalem, a dizzying height. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for as God's anointed, you will be protected. As God's beloved, you won't know fear or worry. No need to be concerned about your own well-being or for those you love. God will protect you. How does this temptation hit home for you? Where do you face danger and uncertainty? Are you taking unnecessary risks? Or are you perhaps hyper-vigilant, afraid to do anything? Hear Jesus' rebuke of Satan. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. To be beloved of God does not mean we turn off our brains and act without thinking. We know ourselves beloved of God even in the midst of our anxiety in caring for ourselves and our loved ones. Pray for the grace of holy wisdom and prudence.
Finally, picture the devil taking Jesus to a high mountain and showing him all the kingdoms of this world. Hear the seductive promise. Price? Sell your soul. Bow down and worship the demon. The banner of Satan is fully unfurled. How does this temptation come alive for you? Can you be bought? What's your price? Reflect on how you've fallen into this trap in the past. And how are you being tempted now? Hear Jesus' response. Be gone, Satan. The Lord our God is Lord alone. Him alone shall you serve. Pray to know where you are most vulnerable to the tempter. And ask Jesus to help you in facing down these temptations. Scripture records that having resisted temptation, the angels came and ministered to Jesus. Who are the angels in your life? Who has your back? Who's looking out for you? Whether they're living on earth or living in heaven, invite them now to be here with you to pray with you and for you. Pray in thanksgiving for their gift in your life. close as we began by invoking the help and strength of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for showing us something of our weakness that we might know more fully Christ's strength. Thank you for revealing some of the tactics of the evil one that we may be more vigilant in protecting ourselves and our loved ones. Help us to reject the false standard and empty promises of Satan. Help us to stand more closely to the heart of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior.
Divine mercy. As we begin, let us center ourselves in love. Take a deep breath in, breathing in God's love and light and strength. And as you exhale, choose to let go of the worries and the fears. With each new breath, welcome in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who guides us and protects us. Let your prayer be as simple as your breathing, taking in love and light and strength, letting go of fear and guilt and shame. Remember that night of the resurrection when Jesus first appeared to his disciples. They just succumbed to their own temptations in the desert. They'd abandoned and denied Jesus at the time when he needed them the most. They'd locked themselves in an upper room filled with fear and guilt and shame. Picture yourself there with them in that locked room. Touch that place within you where you're locked into your own fear and guilt and shame. Suddenly, Jesus arrives without warning. Peace be with you. Shalom. Not the peace of the world, but the peace of the kingdom of God. Jesus breathes on his disciples. He breathes on you. Receive the Holy Spirit. gift of the Spirit. This Spirit, given simply because we are God's beloved, breathe in that breath of life. This is the mark of the kingdom of God, breath that brings life. Nothing to be afraid of. God is with us, within us, Emmanuel. Imagine yourself like Thomas, invited to touch Jesus' wounds. Close your eyes if you haven't done so already. Imagine your left hand to be the wounded left hand of Christ. With your right hand, reach out and probe the nail marks in the wounded hand of Christ. Touch his holy wound. This wound is the price of love. This scar is the standard of Christ's divine mercy. 
This is the mark in the flesh of the new covenant, a circumcision of the soul. Kiss this holy wound. Imagine your right hand to be the wounded right hand of Christ. And with your left hand, reach out and again probe the nail marks. Touch this holy wound. What wondrous love is this? Kiss this holy wound. Jesus is now inviting you to touch the wound in his side. Take your right hand and place it on your left side. Now place your left hand on top of your right hand. Imagine you're touching, like Thomas, the wound in Jesus' side. By his wounds, we are healed. Breathe deeply. This wound in Jesus' side is deep. It leads right to his heart, pierced by a lance. From his pierced heart flows water and blood, the life streams of baptism and Eucharist. In this love, we have our heart's desire. Breathe in that light. Rest in that love. Now move your hands from your side and place your right hand over your heart. Feel your own heartbeat. In the Bible, the heart is not just an organ, but the very center of your person. Move your right hand to the center of your chest, to your heart center, the center of your being. And with your inner eye, look at your inner heart, your spiritual heart. Where is it soft and forgiving, like the heart of Christ? Give thanks for this. But notice there are some parts of your heart that are scarred and burdened and hardened. You have been hurt, and you have hurt others. Breathe into those scars. Breathe into those wounds. Imagine your free hand, your left hand, is the hand of Christ. Place that left hand on top of your right hand, over your heart center. 
This is not just an exercise in imagination. Jesus is indeed pouring his love into your heart. Feel his love flowing into you. He empowers your heart to love. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Yes, the love of Christ gives us the power to do what we cannot do by ourselves. Forgive. To forgive those who wound us, who disrespect us, who have hurt us and our loved ones. Breathe in that power. Exhale the hurt and the resentment. <sighs> Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. If we hold on to the hurt, how will it be healed? If we hold on to the grudges, how will they be mended? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth leaves the whole world blind and toothless. We are called to be the mercy of God in this world today. Breathe in that love of Christ Exhale all that is not divine mercy. us and commissions us. Open your hands now to receive his blessing. As the Father has sent me, so now I send you. I have no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which I look compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which I walk to do good. Yours are the hands through which I bless all the world. I have no body now on earth but yours. And know that I am with you even to the end of the world.